The one thing missing from your soil to attract thousands of earthworms. Imagine just for a second looking down at your garden soil and seeing it alive, literally crawling with thousands of earthworms working around the clock to transform it into a fertile powerhouse. If that sounds like a gardener's dream, here's the shocking truth. Most soils are missing one critical element that prevents worms from calling it home. And honestly, without that missing piece, you can keep adding compost, mulching, or spreading organic matter, yet never build the thriving worm colonies your soil deserves. The secret isn't just about feeding earthworms, it's about creating an environment where they want to live, reproduce, and establish permanent communities. And, you know, once you understand how to give them exactly what they crave, your soil will never be the same again. Why compost alone doesn't guarantee worms. Many gardeners assume that adding compost is the ultimate worm magnet. While compost is undeniably valuable, it only addresses part of the equation. Compost provides food, but worms need more than just nutrition. They require consistent moisture levels, stable soil temperatures, proper pH ranges, and minerals to grind and digest their food. This explains why compost heaps are often full of red wigglers, yet the actual garden beds nearby remain relatively worm poor. Surface feeders may enjoy the pile, but deep burrowing species like night crawlers avoid unstable soil environments. So, to attract and keep both types, you must build a complete habitat that supports all their needs, not just their stomachs. So, what do earthworms really need to thrive? Well, earthworms actually breathe through their skin, which means they just can't survive in soil that's too dry or, on the flip side, totally waterlogged. They really prefer soil that feels kind of like a wrung-out sponge, moist, cool, and, yeah, breathable. Plus, they need a bit of grit, like clay or mineral particles to help with digestion. Without access to these minerals, even well-fed worms just won't thrive. Calcium is well equally essential, not just for digestion but also for reproduction. Worms need a steady supply of calcium carbonate to produce their cocoons. When soils don't have enough of this, populations stay small, no matter how much organic matter you add. In short, worms really crave a balance of organic matter stable structure, mineral grit moisture, and calcium. Miss just one of these elements, and honestly, your soil will never host the thriving colonies that create long-term fertility. Ancient farming wisdom, we've forgotten. Centuries before chemical fertilizers and packaged compost, ancient agricultural societies had already figured out how to create worm-friendly soils. Archaeological studies reveal that civilizations in Mesopotamia and Egypt regularly incorporated biochar, charred organic material with a porous structure that holds water and nutrients while creating microhabitats for worms and microbes. Japanese farmers perfected bokashi-style fermentation, pre-digesting organic matter with beneficial microorganisms before adding it to fields. This created food worms loved while diversifying soil biology. Indigenous farmers in the Americas combined fish remains, wood, ash, and clay, establishing nutrient-rich microzones that drew worms in naturally. These techniques weren't accidents. They treated soil as a living organism, not just a planting medium, and the result was soil that stayed fertile for centuries because earthworms were at the heart of the system. The Worm Feast Trench, a modern breakthrough. Now let's put this wisdom into practice. The most effective way to attract thousands of worms into your soil is by creating a worm feast trench. Unlike compost bins that sit above the ground, these trenches go directly into your garden beds, where worms can move in immediately. To build one, dig a trench about 8 inches deep and 6 inches wide. Place trenches roughly 3 feet apart across your bed for even coverage. What matters most is how you layer the materials inside. Start with a 2-inch layer of coarse organic matter such as corn stalks, twigs, or woody stems. This base provides structure, airflow, and long-term decomposition. On top of that, add a thin layer of biochar or crushed hardwood charcoal. This creates water-holding capacity and surfaces for microbes that worms rely on. 
So now you want to alternate layers of nitrogen-rich materials like grass clippings or coffee grounds with carbon-rich matter such as shredded leaves or even paper. After every couple of layers, go ahead and add some clay-rich soil or bentonite clay. Honestly, this is the missing piece in most gardens. Clay provides the mineral grit that worms really need for their gizzards, and it also helps stabilize the soil structure so they can burrow more easily. To finish up the trench, use a mix of aged manure and finely crushed eggshells or bone meal. For the right balance, use about 1 kilogram of aged manure blended with 1 cup of powdered eggshells, then just spread this evenly across the top of the trench. After that, cover everything with a thick mulch layer of straw or leaves. The mulch is pretty important. It regulates temperature, prevents the soil from drying out, and creates the darkness that worms instinctively seek. Now let's talk about watering the worm trenches. Moisture management is absolutely vital here. Make sure to water the trench immediately after you fill it. The right level of dampness should feel like squeezing a sponge, moist, but not dripping. If your only water source is chlorinated tap water, allow it to sit uncovered for about 24 hours before use, so, you know, those chemicals can dissipate. Ideally, use collected rainwater, which is naturally soft and worm-friendly. Apply about 2 liters of water per trench right after construction, then just monitor weekly. Add more water as needed, always avoiding those soggy conditions that honestly drive worms away. Once worms establish themselves in these trenches, the changes in your soil will be dramatic. Their tunnels will create natural irrigation systems, channeling rainwater deep into the ground and preventing surface runoff. These same tunnels also deliver oxygen to plant roots and soil microbes, invigorating the entire ecosystem. The castings worms leave behind are nutrient powerhouses. On average, worm castings contain 5 times more nitrogen, 7 times more phosphorus, and 11 times more potassium than the surrounding soil. But you know, it's not just about raw nutrients. Castings act as a slow-release fertilizer, delivering food to plants steadily and improving the soil's ability to hold on to nutrients. Plant roots follow worm tunnels into deeper soil zones accessing water and nutrients far below the reach of shallow root systems. This results in crops that are stronger, more resilient, and better equipped to handle droughts, pests, and diseases. Research consistently shows that soils rich in worms retain up to 40% more water, reducing irrigation needs and buffering plants against stress. Building a self-sustaining worm colony is, honestly, pretty fascinating. The beauty of the Worm Feast Trench is that it gets stronger over time. As worms multiply, they continually improve the soil structure, which attracts even more worms. This positive feedback loop means your soil becomes increasingly fertile with less outside input. Alright, let's dive in. Start small by building one or two trenches in different areas of your garden. Within two to three weeks, you should notice earthworms moving in. But hey, the full transformation will take a growing season or more. Over time, you'll discover that your soil becomes easier to work, your plants healthier, and your harvests more abundant. Now on to some final thoughts. The one thing missing from most soils isn't more compost, it's habitat complexity. By combining organic matter with minerals, moisture management, and protective cover, you can create conditions that don't just feed worms, but invite them to stay and reproduce. The Worm Feast Trench is simple, scalable, and transformative. It's a method that blends ancient wisdom with modern insight, and once you see the results, you'll never garden the same way again. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to Soil and Crops Central for more in-depth techniques that turn ordinary gardens into thriving ecosystems. Share this with a fellow gardener who's ready to bring their soil to life, and let's keep building healthier, more fertile soils, one earthworm at a time.